Hi, it's Alex. Today you see me in my hat, because we're going to go outdoors in just a second. Today I want to talk about how you can garden in such a way as to protect and restore the environment. There are a few key ideas that I want to emphasize. The first is to plant native plants, and I mean plants native not just to the continent you're in, but the local region that you're in, and if possible, growing them from a local seed source. The second thing is to remove non-native plants from your garden, and particularly focus on removing plants that are invasive or ecologically damaging. And the third thing is to try to get as much biodiversity as possible, so a lot of different types of native plants. Alright, now we're going to go outside. Now we're outside, so you may wonder why is it important to use native plants. Let's take a peek at this little patch of plants right here. This plant is called white snake root. It's a plant native to the region that I'm in, southeast Pennsylvania. If you look closely, you'll see a little trail that's been cut out. What that is, is the larva of a moth that eats out the inside of the leaf. Now if you look over here, you see there are these little critters eating something out of the leaf stem, uh, out of the stem of this plant. If you look over here, you see something has taken a big chunk out of this leaf. I'm not sure if you can see it, there's a little fly flying around. If you look here, there's an ant walking around on that leaf. Plants co-evolve with insects, and if you grow native plants in your garden, there will be more total insects that eat it, and those in turn will be eaten by things that are predators of insects, like birds and spiders and so on, so you help support the whole food chain. If you're planting non-native plants, it's not going to support as much. There might be a few things that eat it, but you'll support a lot less biodiversity. This also is related to why species become invasive. If species are introduced from another continent, and there are not as many natural things that eat that plant, they get an advantage over the native plants, and they end up spreading and growing more vigorously, outcompeting them, and that disrupts the whole food web, because now you get these large monocultures of plants that are not eaten by very much. Now it's not just important to plant native plants, it's also important to remove non-native and invasive plants. This plant here, I'm going to pull it, it's gone. Ah, that's an Ailanthus altissima sapling. That grows into a huge tree. That tree is kind of damaging because it creates chemicals that inhibit the growth of other plants. I'm going to zoom in on a big one. This is unfortunately where those seedlings came from. So I'm hoping to take this down sooner or later. But basically, wherever that plant is growing, it inhibits the growth of other plants. So it kind of damages the whole ecosystem around it. And like most non-native plants, there's not really all that much that eats it. There are some insects that eat it, but not as much as you would saw on that other plant that was native. Here I want to show you a flower bed that has a lot of different things in it, just to illustrate biodiversity. Biodiversity is important because when there are more different species of plants, there will be more total biomass, N not just of plants, but also of animals, including insects and things. Uh, there's so many different reasons why it's important to diversify your plants. Like here you see there are different flowers. These flowers are actually mint, which is not a native plant here, but this plant is uh, fireweed. This is native. Here's a larger one. Here's the white snake root again. It's about to bloom. This thing that broke off here is horseweed. There are a lot of different native plants in this bed. Basically, the more different plants you have, the more different insects and other larger animals you're supporting. Biodiversity is also important because different plants are adapted to different habitats. If you look around, these are the woods. That's my building down there. These are the woods behind my apartment. If you look here, you'll see a little plant this here is called Enchanter's Nightshade. It has these little burrs that stick to your clothes. It's a very shade-tolerant plant. It loves growing in the woods up here. It wouldn't do quite as well in the sunnier area in front. Uh, here is something I planted, wild ginger. There are a whole bunch of other plants in here. This is a sugar maple tree. That's what maple syrup is made of. That's also a very shade-tolerant tree. It grows in less, like, lower light conditions than some trees require. Here's another shade-tolerant plant. It's called jump seed. 
these are the flowers right here. It's this long spike. It's called jump seed because the seeds just pop and jump several feet as a way of distributing them. So basically, if you plant a lot of plants in your yard, there will be plants that will be better adapted to the different conditions. So if you plant a lot of different plants in your yard, you'll end up with plants that are adapted to different conditions. You may find them spreading into areas where you didn't plant them because generally as humans we're not as great at predicting where the plants would grow best as the plants actually are by growing. Um, so plant more different species of plants and let them do their thing. If you're not great as a gardener, you're not very experienced, then there's safety in numbers. Like if you choose a lot of different plants that are native to your area, you, you're bound to find some of them that thrive in your yard. Then when you have more different plants, they will also spread out into wild ecosystems and help restore and protect them by giving like a greater seed source of these native plants. And you'll also be supporting the whole food web, like insects and other things that depend on the plants. So your whole garden ends up being like a source of biodiversity and protection of ecosystems. And I think that's really awesome. And I want to encourage everybody to garden in this way. So I hope you've gained some insight and I hope you feel inspired to do some gardening. Thank you.